the Schwinn Aluminum Comp. In my time making budget bike videos, I've seen the aluminum comp go from the blue model with its rear rim brake to the silver model with dual disc brakes. And that silver comp was, up until now, in my opinion, one of the best bangs per buck or featured per dollar bikes available at Walmart. But now Schwinn has updated that silver aluminum comp and let me tell you, the updates are many and they are impressive. Today we're going to take a close look at these updates and see what makes up the new version of this bike. Before I get to that, I need to clarify a few things. First is that Schwinn sent me this bike to review, but I have not been paid, I am not sponsored, and nothing you're about to hear has been pre-scripted or pre-approved. Second, there will be lots of comparison talk with the previous version of the aluminum comp, so if you haven't seen that video already, you may want to check the description, or maybe even your screen if it pops up there, and preview that video before you watch this one. You may also want to check out the video where I took $50 and did some upgrades to the bike, ironically with roughly some of the same features that Schwinn included in this new update. And finally, I have Project Comp, where I went all out with the 2019 aluminum comp and turned it into a full-on mountain bike. That said, let's get going. Now some of these differences are easy to spot, others less so if you don't know what you're looking for. Things like the bike's geometry. Very vague crash course, each part on a bike's frame has a specific length and all the parts come together at various angles based on those lengths, more or less. And for the back half of our new comp, everything is pretty much the same as the 2019 version. Then we get to the head tube angle, and now this is an area panned by many mountain bike riders whenever they're looking at any of these budget bikes, because many big box bikes, like last year's aluminum comp, have a 70 degree head tube angle. And while that's technically still within the common range of mountain bike head tube angles, most modern riders prefer something more slack. For this new update, the new aluminum comp, Schwinn has changed the head tube angle to 69 degrees. Now, one degree may not sound like much, but it gives the comp a head tube angle that's comparable with those of entry-level mountain bikes found in local bike shops. Now, we're talking bikes 500, sometimes up to almost $1,000. Add to that the new fork offset, which goes from the previous 32mm to the new 46mm offset. Knowing all that, you can probably tell just by looking that this comes together to give the new aluminum comp a more modern mountain bike stance. And that's already two big changes, but kind of hard to see. The next one we can easily see because Schwinn has historically loved long 90mm plus stems for some reason. This new one, 80mm. Still on the long side, but we'll give them an E for effort. Oh, and that stem? It's also sized to accommodate 31.8 millimeter diameter bars. That means that gone are the old narrow diameter and also narrow length handlebars. So we get bars 31.8 diameter and the specs say 700 millimeters in length. That's up from 600, but when I measured them, I get 711 millimeters. So if you're in the wider is better crowd, then this is going in the right direction. The grips have changed too. Gone are the Schwinn logo grips. These are still slip-ons, but they have more texture for better hand-to-grip traction. Shimano Easy Fire trigger shifters are a carryover, but these are a slightly updated version with smaller view windows. All that I've mentioned has been important, but the big news, the big, big news, is the tapered head tube. By comparison, this is the previous head tube. So what's a taper, you might ask? Well, put simply, it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Well, you may ask why that matters. Well, for starters, it's the end thing right now. For mountain bikes, everyone wants a taper, and most of the best forks require a tapered headset. And incidentally, those $500 plus local bike shop entry-level mountain bikes I mentioned earlier, most of those don't have a tapered head tube. There are other reasons, but that's not for this video. Now let me state that from the factory, the bottom cup is adapted to fit a straight steer fork. But there's a replacement cup available that converts this to a proper taper. More on that at the end of this video. For now, let's talk about this new suspension fork because it's been improved. There are still no adjustment controls, but it does have a beefier crown. Lots more metal and a thicker support arch along with fatter stanchions and even better seals. So the entire front end has mostly been overhauled aside from the wheel set which is roughly the same. The graphics have changed slightly in favor of a more minimalist look but it's the same alloy double wall wheels. And though there's a brand on these tires now, they're the same 275 by 225 tires, even the same tread. My first impressions were that this was the same frame, just with a tapered head tube, but now I see that they've updated the top tube with a new design, and also the seat stays have been updated. They're the same measurements, but the new version has curves. 
All this is very on trend, as is the new finish. The 2019 version was all silver, but now there's a fade. Silver to black. It's a quick transition, but it looks great. And other than the Schwinn branding and the aluminum comp name, it's void of graphics. Drivetrain-wise, the pedals, they're the cross-platform. They use them across all the Schwins now. And everything else on the drivetrain was retained from the previous version, which is really my only complaint. I would have preferred to see this go one by. There's still a tourney at the rear, which is fine at this price and a coveted sight just a year or two ago. There's also the 14 to 28 tooth freewheel from the previous model, and if they're gonna stick with the 3x, I don't think a mega range is asking too much. And also from the 2019 model, generic mechanical disc brakes. Well, there's Schwinn logos on the rotor, so I guess they're not completely generic. Disc brakes on the front and rear, the Comp was one of the first bikes in this price class to have a threadless headset and dual disc brakes. Sadly, it carries over the bolt-on rear wheel. And I thought this seat setup was identical. Looks like the same seat post clamp and seat post, and at first I thought the faux gel saddle was identical, but then I saw that it has black branding and also has new stitching. Let's look at all the cards and hang tags. The wheel card shows the suggested height range, and this bike has an 18 inch frame, and in my opinion, 6'2 is pushing it. And check this out, under usage, it only says smooth light trails. No rugged downhill terrain, I'm impressed. And here's the item detail card with the item number if someone needs that, or maybe even the barcode. So as you can see, some things have stayed the same, but there are lots and lots of small changes and a few big ones. And as for the ride, I can tell you that that is noticeably different as well. It feels less like a hybrid and more like the mountain bike it's supposed to be. The new positioning and wider bars make me want to take cuts and turns when there's no need to do so. And the new geometry and the offset makes the front end not have that forward feel on turns. And that new front suspension, it's not outstanding, but it is noticeable that there have been changes, less perceivable flex, and on the street, I would say smoother on bumps and on transitions. I tried to take this to every location I filmed for my previous aluminum comp review. And in each of those locations, it's a better feeling bike to ride. And there's a definite more mountain bike feel to this new setup, so much so that it pushed me to seek out trails where there are none. Adventurous riding gone wrong, briars. Green ones in the middle of winter. The one let down climbing. Now I knew it would still be tough with a 3x and a 14 to 28 tooth freewheel, but it's actually slightly worse. That's because of the added weight, and I'll get to that in a minute, but for those of us that are hill-challenged or e-bike conditioned, fortunately, this pushes arguably better than before. All kidding aside, it's still usable. If anything, the wider bars help with standing climbs or pulling through steep turning climbs. And trail control is definitely better. Not only from the bars, but also the new fork. I said it had less of a flex feel on the street. That's really noticeable on the trail. Now it is still noisy and underprepared for anything aside from tackling small routes or slightly ruddy terrain at modest speeds. But at that point, we're starting to push that light trails labeling a bit. This is improved enough that I would be confident riding this bike as is on these same trails regularly, at least until I could afford upgrades. It's on the hard pack sections where I can feel everything coming together. All the improvements and the better geometry, it's far smoother, easier to control. Now the tourney does slap around like crazy and make its usual noises. And I rode a tourney on these same trails for years without issues. They're tougher than you would think, just noisy. Excluding the 3 by part of the drivetrain, I would say this is better components and an overall better package than I would have ever expected at this price, at least for now. All the new stuff does come with one trade-off, however, it is heavy. I'm told that comes from the beefier fork and also those new wider bars, bars made out of steel, not aluminum. To me, it's a fair trade-off, considering the bike's future flexibility, at least in my view, and also without it being more expensive. Let me give you an example of that with this fork. Noticeably less side-to-side -side flex. Impressively little, really. I don't have official travel specs on this fork, but my measurements guess it to be 80 millimeters. And I had to look close to get that, because those new seals actually work. Normally, I can measure the grease. Ironically, while it's easy to bottom the fork out, it makes most noise on the rebound. From a price versus features versus I want a mountain bike but I don't want to spend a lot perspective, this is, in my opinion, a better bike than we've seen yet at this tier. At least among consistently available bikes and definitely the best aluminum comp yet. And who doesn't like a fade paint job on a modern frame design that looks well put together? 
and obviously that taper. And remember, many local bike shop bikes over double this price don't have it yet, and this Schwinn does. And to test the legitimacy of this taper, to prove it's not a faper, a fake taper, I've purchased a budget tapered fork and the lower headset cup, I'm told converts this into a full on actual tapered headset. Because if this works as I expect it to, some expensive brands have some catching up to do, because they're lagging behind a budget Schwinn that's sold at Walmart. Let that sink in. And to make it even more impressive, I have two other new Schwinn updates that also have a tapered headset, and even more new features. And that's why you want to make sure you're subscribed and you have that notification bell active so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And now I want to hear your opinion. Comment below and let me know what you think about this updated Schwinn Aluminum Comp. I look forward to the discussion. Thanks for watching and have a great day.